The Northrop Flying Wing stands ready for the long-awaited test flight at Inglewood, California. Test pilot Max Stanley and his crew go aboard. The climax of seven years of engineering research is at hand for the 25-ton monster. And it's contact. The four 3,000-horsepower motors turn the coaxial propellers on the 25-ton giant. Pilots have expressed amazement that the tailless craft has precisely the same flight characteristics as conventional models. With slow, almost lazy grace, the 172 feet of wing is airborne. Fifteen sister ships are under construction for the Army, which will use them as bombers. Fully loaded, they will weigh 50 tons. The flight engineer is a busy man during the test flight. A radical change in design and a new chapter in the steady march of aviation comes forth to challenge the imagination. John W. Snyder is sworn in as Secretary of the Treasury before a large Washington crowd. Chief Justice Vinson of the Supreme Court and former Treasury head congratulates the new Secretary. Mr. Snyder, who becomes the 52nd Secretary of the Treasury, was formerly Director of War Mobilization and Reconversion. In accepting the office, he said that his goal would be to balance the budget by 1947. Secretary of War Patterson bestows the Medal of Merit on Benjamin Fairless, United States Steel President, for the executive's work as advisor to the Ordnance Department during the war. The industrialist is credited with much of the planning and organization that kept weapons moving to battle. As President Truman looks on, John R. Steelman, his labor advisor, is sworn in as director of war mobilization and reconversion. He succeeds John W. Snyder and receives congratulations from the president and naturally from Mrs. Steelman. His will be the job of speeding up the nation's peacetime industry.